They're here. All right, we're gonna continue this. So I've got the two controller boards here in front of me, and this is the one that we're going to be replacing all the MOSFETs on. And uh, another thing I'm gonna do, not just replace those, but I will also be replacing the material that they put on the back of these heat sinks, as you remember me mentioning uh, it's capped on. I noticed that when I took this off on this one, there's like an extra little piece right here. I don't know why they put an extra little piece right there because it doesn't look like it's like it's two pieces of tape they're bound in the middle or anything or like they kind of use it as a as a bridge or something so let's peel it back and see what's going on with that and yeah the fact that they used capped on tape for this is uh i don't know it's it on it never would have been like my first choice or even any choice at all for um insulating material like this for power devices but yeah no that's like that was one continuous piece all the way across and then it had that other piece right there and the, on that third MOSFET and from the left so I have no idea what was going on there or why they even did that but what I'm going to do is I will be replacing all of that with these little mica insulators so we're going to be using some uh, some of that white uh, heat sink compound and on both sides there I'm going to be sticking this to the back of each uh, TO220 MOSFET there. And uh, the cool thing is that all the screws that clamp the MOSFETs to the heat sink already have the little plastic insulator on them. So this should be really quick, should be really easy to do. And uh, we're gonna be doing that to both boards. If I'm gonna be doing it to the, the unit, replacing the, the ones on the one board here that I needed to fix, I'm just gonna be consistent and just do it to all of them. Uh, this was the good board as I already mentioned and this is the one with the two MOSFETs I had to replace or that I tested it with. So all six of these are going and uh, new insulators and uh, heat sink paste. So let's take care of that after this. Uh, we're pretty much mostly done. All I gotta do is put it back together and try to ride the thing. All right, so I kinda wanted to talk about some here before we continue just because it's kinda bugging me. But I don't really understand why they would have used a, a separate piece of Kapton tape on top of uh, the, the sheet that was already stuck onto the heat sink here because I was looking at it closer and under a light here and there's absolutely like no reason why they would have needed another piece of Kapton tape there to to insulate any further and it almost I, I could be being a little cynical here but it seems like almost like it was designed to purposely fail at some point and I, I, I could be wrong about this you know I, I don't not 100% sure but yeah, like capped on tape, uh, it's kind of meant to have like a high heat resistance. So it's not, as far as I'm concerned, I, I really don't think there's anything special about this particular one. But it just it seems like a, a really bad choice of insulating material to use for this. And the fact that there was two layers on that one MOSFET, it just, just seems really suspicious and fishy. So like I said, I, I don't know the exact reasons why they did that but we are basically going to try to eliminate having any issues related to thermal um, causes, you know, or stuff like that. So, all right, well, let's just uh, get this done and that's about it. That's all we can do. So this next part, we can do the easy way or we can do it the hard way. But we're obviously not going to do the hard way because that's uh, too hard. But anyways, so the hard way would be for me to put every MOSFET into its uh, designated spot and then try to put the heat sink on and try to get everything to line up properly. But yeah, we're not going to do that. So what we're going to do instead is I've already put the mica insulators and a little dot of uh, thermal compound on each one of these uh, mic insulators. I'm going to put another spot of 
uh, compound on the back of the, each MOSFET and then I'm going to stick each one on there, put a screw down, but I'm not going to tighten down the screw just yet. So what I'll do after all of them are on the heat sink is I will get them all to, well, opposites, uh, no, yeah, it is that side. Uh, get them all to line up in their in the their holes there, and then just push it all the way down, and then I'll I'll I can solder all the pins on, and that will make sure that all the holes appear at the top to clamp uh, each monster down in the heat sink is properly aligned, and I don't have to sit there and uh, mess with it and try to get everything to line up properly. It'll just be like super quick. Okay, so now these are clamped, but they're just loosely clamped enough so that they can uh, move a little bit in their spots there. And uh, once we tighten them down, a bunch of this uh, thermal compound is probably going to squeeze out the sides and go all over the place. But, I mean, it doesn't matter. This stuff should work a lot better than the capped-on tape that they were using there. So now we can start on one side and just start sticking these in one at a time. And, I mean, it's not super easy, but it's, it'll definitely be a lot easier than if we were to try to put each one in first and then put the heat sink on. And uh, some of these holes didn't clean out as well as I would have hoped they would. And that one there, oops. Okay, problem. <laughs> one of these started bending because apparently I did not clean out the hole properly, even though it was... It's uh, that one right there, so uh, I guess I gotta clean that one out there. You always wanna make sure that all the holes are cleaned up, and I thought I had gotten them all fairly well cleaned, but apparently not, so I just gotta suck that one out there, and it should be good to go. All right, round two, so I got that hole cleaned up, and now it's actually clear all the way across. So this should go back on. I straightened out that pin with the pliers since it got all kind of bent there, but now everything should just go right in there. Come on, there it goes. All right, Ugh, and that one's still bending. Why? <laughs> okay, that's for some reason that hole's being stubborn. <laughs> I'm probably oh, I thought I got it all again. So, I, I okay. What I'm gonna do is apparently there's like a tiny bit of solder still left in there, making it just fat enough where the pin cannot go all the way through. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill it back up with solder and then uh, suck it all back out and hopefully that'll take care of it because I try to get it from the from the side there and apparently that didn't take care of it very well or as well as I thought it had. So, all right, one more shot. Okay, third time's a charm, right? So I cleaned that one out and it actually turns out that the one over here at the end also looked like it still had a tiny bit, like layer kind of like around the inside of the hole which was probably gonna prevent that last one from going in very well. And one of the ones over here on the on the far left side on this side over here uh, also had a little bit of a bit of a too much solder in there. So I cleaned that one out too and I think that's why it was kind of a little more difficult except this one wasn't bending. So it was still going through. It was just providing a little bit of resistance there for the pin to go in. So now this should be should be easier. But let's see. And the last, there it goes. Oh, much better. The, that one, in, that went right in, no issues whatsoever. So now what I can do is I can hold the heat sink with some pressure down onto the board there, and that will kind of pretty much make all of these MOSFETs uh, line up properly. And then I can go and tighten each one of them, and that will make sure that all of these are aligned on the board there and they're not going to move any further once I solder them in place. You can see that all the oh, this one here, the mica material kind of moved off to the right. Another thing I want to do also once I'm done tying everything down is I'm going to do a continuity check on the, the drain pin of each one of these which is also the tab to the heat sink and make sure there's no continuity 
Uh, and I've, I kind of do that because I, I had a problem once where this power device, I, it was like an amplifier, I think. It, it just kept shorting, or it was acting like it was shorting. And I didn't know why, and I couldn't figure it out until I realized that I had continuity between the collector pin and one of one of the transistors and the heat sink. And what happened was that there was a tiny piece of wire that had gotten trapped between the the backplate on the transistor and the heat sink. So when I squeezed them down, I wasn't using mic, I was actually using uh, some of that cell pad stuff. So when I tightened it down and it was squeezing down on it, the wire kind of broke through and was causing a short between the the heat sink and the and the collector on that transistor. So even though the mic I probably wouldn't some that wouldn't happen with the mica I would still check it just to be on the safe side just because I don't want to have any issues with it later on but that's uh, that side there so I'll start soldering these on and I'm going to also I'm gonna start here in the middle I'm just gonna like hold it down as I do that so that way it keeps everything kind of flush with the board because the one thing we don't want is we don't want the the MOSFETs like kind of sitting away from the board like this because then vibration is going to uh, act on this heat sink quite a bit and eventually those pins might break and they didn't provide any way for the heat sink to clamp onto the board and we just want to avoid having any issues in the future so I'm just going to try to keep this as flush on the board as possible when I solder it to prevent the vibrations from killing this thing a little too early. You know, after mentioning all that, I, I guess if we're gonna be, try to be kind of thorough here, let's just be a little bit more thorough. So now that all these are clamped down, let's just pull it out. And what I'll do is just to minimize vibrations even more, is I'll put a thin strip of double-sided adhesive here, which I have uh, right here. And that will hopefully keep um, the heat sink there stuck to the board just a little. Actually, before we do that, let's clean it with alcohol just to, make this stickiness maximum as or as best as we can let's get it to, to stick properly here so let's give this a good cleaning with some alcohol and uh, you can see there's quite a bit of crap coming off of that and let's clean the other side as well on the board side here and that double-sided adhesive will just uh, eliminate vibrations even more or at least that's what I'm going for here without modifying the board too much because I guess what we could do is we could have drilled some holes on the board and drilled some holes and tapped them on the heat sink but that's just going a little too but no, too far on this I think this heat sinks not that heavy I mean it's a really small heat sink so without modifying it too much this should do the trick and uh, I actually kind of like this tape it's supposed to be for like scrapbooking and stuff but it's really strong tape and if I could get it on there that would be nice okay there we go so we're just gonna lay a strip all the way across like that and uh, now I kinda wish I had a blade or something to cut it with I'm gonna kinda give some pressure there to keep it down Okay, let's just cut it here. This is actually going to kind of help us in two ways. Not only is it going to keep the heat sink from vibrating too much, it's also going to help me hold it in place while I solder in all the pins for the to the MOSFETs there. So then this uh, upper strip just kind of peels off. Now our tape's in place. Now we can put this back on, and because all those MOSFETs are already lined up properly, you s oh, I didn't, you weren't able to see that. I'm sorry. But now, because all these are clamped down and they're all aligned properly, we can actually just uh, put this right in, no issues. So that is on there now. And it's not too bad. Okay, let's do this.
All right, so that'll do it for this one. And it actually feels pretty secure in there. That's not gonna go anywhere. Um, I ended up filling in the top pins over here like the drain and the source on some of these because the solder didn't quite fill up all the way. And uh, there's uh, traces up here on the top that go to the motor and to the power. So I wanted to make sure that we get some pretty good conductivity on those there. All I have to do now is trim off all the the excess material there, but that's not a big deal. So let's check continuity now on all these uh, drains and uh, the heat sink. And hopefully it should be fine. We shouldn't have any issues. But like I said, I always like to double check things just because I've screwed up in the past and <laughs> had issues that it took me a while to figure out. So nothing, 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 nada. And, uh, yep, see if I touch the two heat sinks there, or, I'm sorry, <laughs> dude, I, I'm totally stuck at this, I apologize. But anyways, there's uh, no continuity in between any of these here. If I touch the screw, obviously it's going to beep because it's going straight through the heat sink. But on the, the drains here of every single one of these MOSFETs, there's absolutely no conductivity. So... This one should be completely fine. I will go through the same procedure with the other one, adding the thermal compound to each MOSFET and the heat sinks there. And I'm also going to tape down that um, heat sink to the board. The good thing about this one is that I don't have to worry about alignment so much because these were all already aligned to the, the heat sink when they were put on. So I just gotta go through, add some thermal compound to all these and stick some tape on the heat sink there tape it down and uh, should be good to go. All right, so that's all done now. Just gonna probably give it a little quick uh, cleaning with some alcohol there to wash away that rest of that flux residue. But other than that, we're looking good so far. Okay, so nothing here you haven't seen before and call me slow but I just realized that even if I would have had this thing on the table the first time I was testing it out it wouldn't have gone anywhere because it's resting on these rubber pads right here and I mean it's, <laughs> it has nowhere to go as long as you're holding on to it so yeah I it just yeah whatever <laughs> anyways so let's go ahead and plug everything back in and let's see if it still turns on and if it still works as it should All right, got one, and this is the one that we fixed. Okay, no issues so far. Let's see if pushing on this power button here turns it on. Should be this one. I think, or was it that one? Oh, on off right here. Okay, so still on, still works. I'm gonna step on these right here. So that seems to be working. So it seems like it's still working just fine. That beeping is so annoying though. It's so loud. It's kind of obnoxious. I could have been like something a little more pleasant, but whatever. I didn't design the thing. <laughs> so only other thing that we need to figure out is uh, what the deal is with the whole uh, charging um, circuit. I'm hoping that there's nothing wrong with the battery. I was going to do this, uh, like a whole repair, uh, like a bunch of clips of trying to do the repair on the charger. But in the end, it decided not working out. And I really didn't want to mess with it too much. I didn't want to uh, deal with it because like I said, the charger was so, it's so cheap to get a new one that it just didn't seem like it was worth the effort to try to get the original one 
working and everything. I, I mean, the circuit itself wasn't super complicated. It might have been pretty easy to reverse engineer, but I did try to fix it and it ended up being a complete failure. But this, what I did is I ended up replacing a, a few resistors and so that one transistor that was burnt, the uh, LM358. And uh, I went to plug it in and this is what happened. Yeah. <laughs> It, yeah so yeah I, I just kind of gave up on it and decided I'm, we're just gonna order a new one funny thing about the original power supply is that I tried to um, I decided to just let it see how much smoke we could release out of the thing and I decided to plug it in and after that transistor blew um, nothing else really happened and now that when I plug it in the LED actually stays green Seems a little dim, but it actually stays green and it's putting out about, like, I think about like 36 volts I measured. And as you can see here, oh, 34.47. Uh, so that's the that's the uh, voltage it's outputting there, but it does stay pretty stable, even though I, I did try to load it down with a, a pretty big beefy resistor and it it did hold it. So I guess we can try and see if it, if the, charging circuitry and the battery holds up all right so plugging this in just to see what it does I've already disconnected the two battery connections here from the main boards and uh, it was I'm putting 37 point or 34 point what it was it seven something I don't remember but anyways if I plug this into the battery there and I check the voltage here the multimeter actually says 37.64 and checking it at the battery terminals here it also says 37.64 but if I unplug it that voltage stays about the same so oh I'm sorry you can't see the multimeter but anyways the voltage stays about the same so that means that this isn't really pumping anything into it because the battery voltage is higher than what this is putting out but at least it's not getting shorted which uh, hopefully means that there's nothing wrong with the battery pack and I still have no idea why this ended up dying in the first place <laughs> Well, that's kind of interesting. I plug these in and they seem to be partially on and I wonder why that is. You can see I unplug them. And uh, actually if I wiggle that around, it kind of, that's weird. Huh. That is really interesting. Let me put this around here and you can see that for some reason, the LEDs on this side are like very faintly on, but not on this side. And uh, I don't know why that is. If I like wiggle it around right here on the connector, they kind of flicker. So that is really weird. I don't, I don't know. Let's try pushing the power button and seeing if they just kind of dim out, but they're still on. And if I turn it off, they turn on. So what is going on there? Okay, I guess we got a little more investigation to do there. Okay, so I guess it turns out that there was a little bit of <laughs> impurities and then that must have landed in this spot right here because that's where the LED is connected and the way this works is that the positive from the this LED cluster right here goes through a big resistor and then from there it goes to the positive input of the battery and then the ground, the negative lead from the battery, there is a small transistor right here that goes directly to that ground. And then the base of that transistor goes off into what I'm assuming is the microcontroller. So I ended up spraying some alcohol in this area here and wiping it clean. And after that, uh, it doesn't do that anymore. Right now it's actually on, but if I turn it off, you can see that the LEDs are not on at all. So <laughs> I think what it must have been is um, I had a beer sitting here on my workbench and I think I must have uh, like splashed a little bit of it and I guess it must have landed like right in that area and that's what was causing the issues so it it seems like it's fine and it was just like totally my fault and ho luckily it wasn't anything more serious so I think we should be fine now and we're just going to finish putting this thing back together
So the charger finally arrived and it came to, with this uh, label right on the outside on the back, uh, 42 volt, two amps appropriately labeled. So let's open it up and we'll give it a shot here and see if it actually charges up. So there's power cord, there's a the charger itself. As you can see, it's uh, pretty identical to the other one. All right, so I'm guessing that when we plug it in, that maybe the battery light is going to come on and show something. So this one here, I believe should be green. Yeah, so the LED is green, signifying that it's um, not charging or it's unplugged. I don't know if this one's actually labeled or not. Yeah, so red light means charging. Uh, you can barely see that there, but then green light means to charge full or disconnect. So let's go ahead and plug this in. Hopefully <laughs> nothing's going to fry on us here. So uh, the light is uh, kind of red greenish. It's like not exactly red, but it's not completely green either. So it's kind of orangish. And uh, I guess maybe the LED on the actual thing here doesn't show anything. But according to this, it looks like it should be charging. I guess I'll let it sit for a while and let it fully charge and turn green. Okay, so I've let this thing sit here for a while and the charger has gotten a bit warm, so it's like it is doing something. But I figured maybe we should check the voltage on the battery and see what it's at right now. If you remember, we can actually measure the voltage directly from that, that charging port right here on the, on the uh, hoverboard. So yeah, that turns back to green when you unplug it, so that's still working fine. So I believe it was these two bottom ones right here. Let's see what it's measuring. So, well, okay, so I have the leads backwards, but it's definitely charged up because now it's sitting, at, it's sitting at 40 volts where before it was like at, at 36 something. So I'll let it sit for a little while longer and hopefully eventually this uh, turns green and it finishes charging. Took a little bit over an hour, but this thing has finally turned green. So it looks like charging circuit wise, everything is fine. Doesn't look like there's any uh, further issues. <laughs> so uh, yeah, moment of truth. Okay, so quick little disclaimer. I don't ride skateboards or rollerblades or roller skates, although I can kind of do some roller skates, but not very well. So I thought I should probably put on a little bit of protection in case I uh, fall off of this thing when I'm trying to get on it. So um, that's not too overkill, is it? All right, so I'm gonna be giving this a shout out here and uh, hopefully I don't kill myself or hurt myself in any bad way because uh, that would be terrible and plus nobody's home right now, so I'm by myself. So I'm gonna take this over there to the far corner. I've already kind of swept up, so make sure that there's no like debris and stuff that I could uh, potentially get caught up on and uh, let's go. Try to use a broom.
Yeah, this is a, a lot harder than I thought it would be because as soon as like you start tilting forward or backwards, it just it just wants to go. So even with the broom trying to help me out here, it's uh, yeah, it's gonna take me a while to get used to this. That was the best one so far. All right, well, it's gonna take me a while to get the hang of this like completely, but I mean, I, I sort of got it. Excuse my obnoxious bird. He's he's always super loud like this whenever he wants attention, wants to get out or whatever. But anyways, so it, it's working fine as far as I can tell. I mean, I, I'm sure I could go faster, but <laughs> no, I'm not ready for that. So cool. So if you, get, um, if you guys enjoyed this, remember to thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you'd like. So. See you guys next time.